I'm a water, Mom Nick. And I'm Jackson. From Top Notch Sports. And today we are back in the studio with another video. All right, it's the first time in a while. Got my co host back from like 10,000 years ago. A lot more content coming on the way, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. We're all excited. Uh, but today's topic, okay, we're going to be talking about the commanders. But more importantly, today we're going to be talking about Coach EB, Eric Bieniemy. And then we're going to, after that, we will slowly start going to what we think this commander's team is ultimately how they're going to pan out in the 2023 NFL season with Sam Howell, Coach EB, Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio. I mean, again, this coaching staff, they have a lot of big personalities on this team. Uh, you know, and I've been a big fan of this coaching staff for quite some time. You bring in EB. We all know Jackson's a big Chiefs fan. So, again, let's talk to the expert when it comes to Eric Bieniemy. Jackson, what do you think about this guy, and what do you think about this commander team? Look, when it comes to Eric Bieniemy, I've always, you know, I've kind of been in between on Eric Bieniemy, and, you know, overall I think I do like him as a coach. I think he's a he's a great guy personally. Um I think he's what this commander's offense needs. You know, the past year they averaged 18.9 points a game and put up 12 or fewer points in five of those games. And I think Eric Bieniemy is going to be able to come in and he's going to be able to change that. Now, players are saying Bieniemy is being a little too intense, which I think is just nonsense. Like, again, like I said, this team put up 19 points per game last year. You can't, you're going to come in and say your new offensive coordinator is being too intense. What he's trying to do is he's just trying to establish the culture and, you know, get an offense that can give their team a chance. You know, this commander's defense is pretty solid. You know, this team could scrape out, you know, a few wins if their offense can just put up 20 points a game. This commander's defensive line is one of the best in the league, in my opinion. And I think that's not, you know, a secret to anyone. But um, back to the enemy, I think what he's going to do for this team is going to be very, very positive. I think I wouldn't be surprised maybe to start the season if they were, you know, kind of just a little cold, you know, trying to find a rhythm. But I think over time, as the season goes, we're going to see the team, you know, get a little more consistent, a little more continuity. And we're going to just see them feel a little more comfortable. And I think over time, they're just going to grow to be enemy. And I think over time, the Commanders fans are going to love the enemy. For sure. I mean, look, the enemy is a guy that's been working with one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game in Pat Mahomes for years. And as a coach myself, I'll say this. You sometimes learn from players, right? I mean, you learn. So the enemy, you know, whatever he was as a coach, you know, he's learned things from Mahomes. He's learned things from Andy Reid, other coaching staff members. You learn things from people around you. And I mean, the enemy was surrounded by, and I'm not saying that the enemy was not good to begin with. I'm just saying that being around Mahomes, he's learned, he's grown, he's probably learned some things that Mahomes does that nobody else can do that maybe he can teach Sam Howell. You know, you learn the quarterback's work ethic, their style, what they do before practice, what they eat. The enemy learns this. Now he can pass this information on to Sam Howell. You know, he's learned from Andy Reid. Probably, I'm going to be honest with you, I think people are going to start considering him maybe the best coach to ever do it. You know, it's Belichick for quite some time, but Belichick right now is falling off a little bit. Again, I'm not saying Belichick is not good, or I'm not saying Belichick isn't better than Reed. I'm just saying that if Reed continues to win and Belichick continues to fall off after the Brady era, people are going to start making arguments. You know, they're going to start making arguments here. So the Commanders last year went 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one with an absolutely putrid offense, right? They bring in the enemy. 8-8-1, eight, eight, those eight wins are probably credited to the defense, that ranked very highly. Like you mentioned before, I mean, I know you mentioned some of the offensive stat numbers. Listen to these defensive stat numbers. The Commanders' defense ranked seventh in best points allowed in the entire league. Fourth best in percentage of drives ending in an offensive score, right? So that means, again, they're fourth best for it not ending, right? They stopped them, so they wouldn't allow them to score. Fourth best in yards allowed, et cetera, et cetera. And third best in third down conversion rate, okay? So, again, they didn't let up third downs. So what I'm trying to say is here, this defense is good. And when you look on paper, too, I mean, we know this. Chase Young, Darren Payne, you know, Jonathan Allen, Montez Sweat, okay? These guys are studs. You go to the cornerback room, right? You got Kendall Fuller. Uh, you got Emmanuel Forbes, first-round pick this year, which I do feel like was a little bit of a reach. But, again, this guy can make turnovers. He's fast. He's lengthy. Uh, you know, I just think there was better guys on the board at the time they chose him. But, again, good guy. Cameron Curl, Derek Forrest. Really, really solid safety room, cornerback room, great defensive line. How that you stop this defense is all going to come down to the offense. So what do you think about this commander's well? I mean, what's your opinion on Sam Howell now? I mean, you have saw him probably a little bit with the enemy. I mean, what do you think he's looking like? 
Yeah, so the game against the Ravens was the really the one game I, I watched, and I thought Sam Howell looked phenomenal that game. He went 19 of 25 with uh, 205 yards total with two touchdowns, 123.4 passer rating. And um, he made that play at the end of the half where he kind of just like stayed there. He rolled right and he found them. I think it was Diami Brown in the back of the end zone. So, look, I think obviously this guy is a very young quarterback. He's going to take a lot, and, you know, there could be struggles in the beginning of the season. But I think if you just give him time, like we said, the enemy works with Mahomes. And like you said, coaches learn from players. And if the enemy is a smart coach, which I think he is, he definitely learned a lot from Patrick Mahomes that he can feed to Sam Howe. So I think over time, this commander's offense is going to look pretty solid. Absolutely. And, I mean, again, you look at some of the pieces that they've been able to stack over the last few years. Again, the 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 Emmanuel Forbes pick, I'm going to keep on saying, I think there was better guys on the board at the time. But you cannot say that he's not a playmaker. I mean, this guy is a playmaker. And I trust Del Rio. I trust Ron Rivera. I mean, they're two old-school defensive-minded coaches. Uh, but you go and you look at this. They drafted a guy, I believe it was last year, in Sam Cosme. I was very high on the offensive tackle, Sam Cosme, coming out. You know, I really, really like that pick. It might have actually been two years ago. I'm looking back now. Is he Might playing been, guard now? Uh, no, I think. Oh, yeah, he is. He's playing right guard now. But again, he came out as a tackle back in 2023. Uh, tw- I think it might have been 2020 then, or 2021. I'm sorry, 2021. Liked him a lot. You know, he was somebody that I thought could honestly end up being maybe even an offensive tackle. He was my seventh ranked offensive tackle coming out of 2021. You got him starting at right guard. Great guy right there. Young piece for that team, right? You got someone like Jahan Dotson who I know Mike was definitely high on, you know, Diami Brown, somebody that I was decently high on. He was in my top, I believe he was in my top 10 uh, ranked receivers coming out of the 2021 draft. Again, another guy I was really high on, hasn't really found strides there yet in Washington, and they got a hell of a receiver room already, McLaurin, Dotson, Samuel, you know, but he's somebody, I'm telling you, don't sleep on him. You know, they haven't really had a quarterback. You give him Sam Howell, he can be really solid. Brian Robinson Jr., yeah. I was high on him too, okay? I believe he was in my probably top seven, top five coming out that year. Uh, I'll check and see real fast what I actually officially had him ranked. I mean, I got to scroll around a little bit. But again, what I'm trying to say is here, ultimately, this team has a lot of pieces that are young and that are going to continue to, you know, push this team forward in the right direction. And again, not a lot of teams have this. You know, Cosme, you know, uh, Brown, Dotson. Robinson Jr., Sam Howell, I believe, was my fourth or fifth-ranked quarterback coming out of that year's draft class. You know, I had him over some people. And, again, everyone forgets. I mean, people had Ritter over him. People had um, Carson Strong over him. I had Howell over both those guys. I said, this guy's a big arm. He loves to throw the deep ball. You know, he has a good arm. And the defense, again, enough said about the defense. I mean, they are a really solid room, that defense, especially the defensive line. So, I mean, at the end of the day, this commander team, they went 8-8-1 eight, eight last year. Do we think they can steal a few extra wins? I mean, what do you think? I mean, in the NFC East, if they can steal a few extra wins, are they making the playoffs in the NFC? I mean, the NFC is, I mean, definitely the weaker conference. I mean, just looking at the, I mean, looking at the offense here, if, if Sam, Sam has got some weapons, he really does. And if he can just, again, if the offense can just, you know, put up t- like 21 to 27, 28 points a game, they're definitely going to steal a couple wins with how their defense plays. Um, the linebacking core a little kind of worries me. You know, Jamin Davis is solid, but other than that, it's a little weak. But I think, I think the you know, I'm not going to say this team's going to make the playoffs, but the playoffs is not out of the question. I agree. I mean, I, and I'm telling you this right now, too, if the enemy can get this team to where we want to see them be, man, could they be good. Because, again, it really was their offense that was holding them down. You, like I said, they got a lot of young weapons now. You know, they got maybe, in my opinion, probably a really, uh, you know, like legitimate offense in general. They got weapons. They got a legit offensive-minded coach in there that can help them run this offense with a lot of their weapons. Like we said, Diami Brown's their fourth receiver. Okay, that's a really, really good fourth receiver for a team. I'm trying to see where they're – I think that they have uh, – some of the odds, I think, has commanders at six and a half wins. I mean, I, I think that they can definitely have the over if that's right. I mean, what do you think for over under win total? If it is six and a half, do you think they can win seven or more? I think if you can get commanders six and a half wins, I would I would definitely put some money on the over there. I mean, 
you're basically just you're betting on you're betting on the offense to put up 20 points. And I think as an NFL offense, you should be able to do that. I 100% agree. Let's see their schedule. Let's just let's just see their schedule and then we'll wrap this up. Like the commander's schedule is the following. So let's just see now play mind games. They need six and a half. So they need seven or more. What Eddie? What Eddie set? Cardinals win, right? Agree? Yeah, yeah. All right. Broncos. I think they could possibly sneak that one out, but it's in, I believe it's in Denver. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I, go, I wouldn't. I wouldn't just go ahead and give that one. So but I, I wouldn't like they can definitely win that game. Yep. Bills loss at Philadelphia. I'm gonna give them a loss. Against Chicago in Washington, I'm going to be honest with you. I think the commander's off-defensive line gets after Justin Fields, and they create havoc. I'm going to give them a win against Chicago. So there's two. Against Atlanta in Atlanta, I'm giving them a loss there. But that's a winnable game. Mm -hmm. So how many do you have them at now? Two, three? What's what's your number at? I'm the same thing. It's just the the game against the Broncos, the game L against the Eagles, L against the Bills. Winning against yeah. the Bears, and then you get the two toss-ups so far. All right. Against New York, in New York, you know, the Giants. I'm going to give them a loss in New York, but, again, another winnable game, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Against Philadelphia, in Washington. <sighs> I'm I not going to – I think they can win this one, but I'm not going to give it to them because I'm going to play un, I'm gonna play the under. I'm going to really go as low as I can. Against New England in New England, I think Billy O'Brien will be able to get this team back on track. I'm going to give him a loss there, but that's another winnable game. Against Seattle in Seattle. Tough game. Tough game. I think they're going to get after Geno Smith. I'm going to give him a win on that one. I know that's crazy. I'm going to give him the win on that one because I, I, Geno Smith had one crazy year and now everyone's acting like this guy is like a great quarterback. It could be a flirt season, ladies and gentlemen. Against New York Giants at home, going to give him the win on that one. Against Dallas away, loss. Against Miami at home, I'm going to give them the L. In L.A. against the Rams, I'm going to give them a win. Okay, I don't don't see the Rams being that good. I mean, I know they still got pieces, but, man, I just don't think they get a complete team. Against the New York Jets in New York, I'm going to give them a loss. Against the Niners at home, I'm going to give them a loss. And at the Cowboys at home, I'm going to give them a win. That puts them at six. But – I mean, it's six and a half. There's so many toss-up games. I feel like they can easily get six. If you just flip any of those games, I said toss-up, you get that seven. So, I mean, I see why the over under six and a half. This is a tough schedule. Tough. Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, you're versus the NFC East, which the NFC in general is not tough, but the NFC East is pretty damn tough this year. Yeah, you the know? NFC East is pretty good. So, I mean, let me ask you this. Over under six and a half, what would you, what would you do? I mean, looking at the – crap. Um, I think I'm going to – I think I'm going to say over because I think how many games they lost last year, if they just would have scored maybe one more touchdown. Yeah. So, I, I'm going to say – I think they can pull out seven. I I, th- I think they can at least get seven. I, I Again, I think we're sitting right around where we were last year, seven to nine wins. I uh, I don't see them regressing. I mean, I know the division's tough, but man, I mean, they got a tough schedule. I mean, Seattle, Miami, the Bills, you know, that that's tough. You know, the only the only gimme game in my opinion is the Cardinals week one. And again, that's week one, so you don't even know how that's gonna go. But I mean, the New England Patriots, if they find their you know feet footing back, that's gonna be tough. Uh the Jets, I just bet some money on them winning the Super Bowl this year because <laughs> I, I couldn't. The Chiefs is only plus six hundred. I had to go with somebody that's a little bit different. So I went with the New York Jets. 
the Niners are tough, you know, Dallas tough. So it's going to be interesting. But I feel like this team can win eight, nine games this year, seven, eight, nine, you know. And, and again, if they win nine games, that's playoff bound this season. That is definitely playoff bound for the NFC, in my opinion. So we'll wait and see what happens. But anything else that you got? Um, you know, like we said, like, you know, seven, eight, nine wins, you know, on paper may not be much of an improvement from last year. But if you guys have seven, eight, nine wins and your offense improves by 1,500 to 2,000 yards, I mean, it's a dramatic improvement from last season. So I think Commanders fans just need to just stay in there, grind out the season. And I think overall, you guys are going to be pretty happy. Even if they win seven, six or seven games this year, which is a regression, right? But their offense looks better and their defense is still playing up to par. They're just not winning. I mean, I don't think you can fire Riverboat Ron Rivera. I don't, I think you just got to keep this staff together, let them continue to go, and let them continue to build continuity because I'm telling you, if they fire Ron Rivera, it's going to be another rebuild for this commander's team, and they're going to be right back to square one again. So let me ask you this. Final thing I'm going to ask. If this team wins six games, do you pull the plug on Ron Rivera? Your personal opinion, what do you think? I think. It honestly depends on how the offense does because I think maybe, you know, that they win six games with Sam Howell has a really good season and the offense has a good season as total. Maybe that's like when you maybe want to put the enemy as the head coach, maybe. That's yeah. just my thought on that. But, yeah, that's a bit – it just – it depends on how the season goes. I can't just say, oh, they won six, win, six wins, you got to pull the block. Yeah. I got to see how, how the team looks. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm all for continuity, keeping this thing together. Let the enemy get a few years as an offensive coordinator on his own. Uh, and again, it's not that I don't think he can get the head coaching job or anything. I just, I think you let him work his magic with this team. And again, I, I honestly, I think that NFC East is up for grabs. I mean, I know Philadelphia lost Jonathan Gannon. They lost a lot of coaches. They lost Steichen. They lost Gannon. They can see a slight regression. I know they added a lot of players, but they, you can see a slight regression with the coaching staff. Commanders upgraded their coaching staff. I feel like there's only going to be improvements in the next few seasons. One of these other teams are going to start losing some games due to, you know, losing their, like, people like having their coaches poached away from them. So that's all from us. We'll see what happens. Commanders fans, good luck this season. I'm excited to see what happens. See you guys soon. Peace. We are still better. See you guys soon. Peace.